The year 1936, in an hotel room in San Antonio, blues legend Robert Johnson wrote history by recording the first of his two known recording sessions that changed the future and the sound of blues forever. It said he sold his soul to the devil in exchange for superhuman guitar skills, which probably actually happened, but what's cool as well is the techniques they used in recording these songs. You see, Robert Johnson was actually facing the corner of a room, apparently creating a more lively and richer sound when he was recording these songs. And in this video I wanted to explore some fun ways of recording the guitar or any instrument and as well take things a few steps further. So now the mic is facing the guitar and I'm facing the corner. So the microphone is not only capturing the direct sound of the guitar but also the reflections bouncing back off the walls. And let's see how this compares to recording in the middle of a room. I'm noticing a brighter and more punchy sound when recording in the corner. The lower mids and the bass are a bit boomy, but it sounds pretty decent to be honest. I'm recording the guitar with the Shure MV88 Plus, which connects to my smartphone. And the guitar I'm using is a Furge Little Jane travel guitar, which folds into three. Pretty handy. When you go to a music studio, you often see that these rooms are acoustically treated with bass traps, diffusers, um, panels. This is to prevent a whole bunch of frequencies from going wild and bouncing back and forth. You can easily hear this when going into a bathroom for example and just hum from low to high and you will notice that some frequencies are way louder than others. Let's have a listen. So here I am in the bathroom. We should hear more natural reverb in our recordings. Let's see if this place sounds any good. Compared to the hotel room, the bathroom has a very short and boomy sounding reverb, almost acting as a sort of a slapback delay. But the sound itself is very boomy and unbalanced, and this is because the room is so small. Some frequencies are captured way louder than others because they bounce back off of the wall and sort of reinforce the original signals of the guitar, and therefore these waves become way louder. This is called a standing wave, and isn't really something we're looking for to be honest. But these room reflections aren't inherently a bad thing. It gives a nice and natural sounding feel to our sound because our ears are used to hearing reflections all the time. If anything, if you were standing in a room without any reflections at all, a so-called anechoic chamber, it can drive you completely nuts. When we kill almost all the reflections in a recording, it sounds lifeless and dead. A way to fix that is to add effects like reverb to our recordings later, but what if we can find a room that sounds just perfect by itself? The middle of a hotel room isn't actually a very bad place to record in. I like to keep the 50-50 rule. 50% 50 reflection, for example a wooden floor, a plaster wall, and 50% absorption or diffusion. So that could be furniture, curtains or acoustic treatment of some kinds. Because the hotel room has the obvious carpet and some heavy couches and curtains, it falls pretty neatly in that 50% rule. But what if you went way above that 50% rule? If you look for that ambient sound, tons of reverb, where could we go? Do you know that massive sound you get when you close the door in a parking garage? I'm trying to find out if the same happens when you play guitar. Woo! And for the sake of this video, let's try the corner loading recording technique used by Robert Johnson in a corner of a room. So let's record in the corner of that very parking garage and see how it sounds. Very 
sweet how to add so many layers to the sound just by going to a different room without any effects added later. Just the guitar in that very room. And here's some more. Playing guitar in a canyon. Right, I'm here at Eaton Canyon and there's no wall, so no reflections at all apart from the ground, which is a bit sandy, so it would absorb most reflections of the guitar. Playing guitar on the beach. Okay, I probably forgot to bring my wind jammer for that because the wind messed up the recording. But it's just so much fun to go to a room or a place or a location that actually sounds unique and gives you a different feel than we're used to. So I'm gonna try to do something fun. I put the recordings of the canyon, so a very dry recording, and the recording for the parking garage into Ableton Live. I'm going to see if I can digitally or artificially add reverbs and sounds so I can make the canyon version the dry version sound a little bit like the parking garage version. So if we can recreate that cool space we recorded in and the corner as well. So let's see what we got. So this is the dry version from the canyon. And this is the parking garage. I slapped the reverb on the track to simulate the parking garage room. I had to cut some of the highs and the lows of the reverb to make it sound more natural. Also I had to put an EQ on the entire track to make the canyon sound a little bit more boomy and a little bit more bright. And this is how it sounds. So the parking garage with a real reverb. And now the canyon with effects. Turn the effects off. So it sounds pretty cool, it sounds pretty close as well, but I think the original recording in the parking garage definitely sounds way more natural and just more lively, I guess. Both at the same time. I didn't record with a click, it's just I played it exactly the same. Instead of recording everything as dead or as clean as as possible, <laughs> actually go to the physical space that sounds cool, can give you a lot of inspiration. And maybe this even ties back to the, the lo-fi kind of thing that's becoming very popular right now. Are we all craving for that dirty, gritty feel of the olden days? Is everything too sterile and too clean? We had the sound of an old tape, a vinyl, a tube, a redux, warble. We do everything we can to add some of that vintage feel back to our pristine high-end recordings. But why not start at the basis? Why not record a maybe not so perfect recording? My blues videos where I play three songs are always recorded outside and they inspire me a lot. Down by the waterside, the rippling sound of the water or the river, uh, the birds singing through your recordings or the background noise of a city. I think it's a real fun way to record and add another layer to your sound. Okay, granted, it takes a bit more time and organizing, but making and recording music should never be rushed anyway. So I think it's great to experiment with this kind of stuff. And if you listen closely, you can hear the crickets. A slight stream of water just running through the creeks. It's very beautiful. Why not record in a canyon? And by the way, my new course, Next Level Playing, is launching on February the 9th. So make sure to check it out at nextlevelplaying.com. Hope to see you there. Cheers! Cheers.